What's going on everybody and welcome back to the REI Cashflow Tribe podcast. My name is Bailey Kramer and in this video, I wanna talk about how much reserves you should keep in your bank account for your properties. So this question really struck me today specifically because I was looking at my bank account like I do multiple times throughout the day and I was just thinking, okay, like I've got some money in there, enough to basically a little bit right around the amount I need to buy a property. And I was like, okay, should I take all this money and dump it into a property? And then I was like, well, I don't want to take all the money because then I'll have no reserves for my other properties and I want to have reserves. So then I was like, okay, well then how much reserves should I keep my properties? And then this is where this whole thing sparked. So I talked about it with my community today. And, you know, a lot of people have general rules, rules of thumbs, like you should have three to six months of operating expenses. And then I started to kind of think about that and say, okay, to operate my properties, the mortgages, the insurance, you know, everything all in is roughly between a thousand and fifteen hundred dollars per property. So let's just say let's go on the low end and just say a thousand dollars per property. That's three grand a property, which is nine thousand dollars in reserves. And that number's realistic. But then I started to think, okay, well, what about if a roof goes out or something big happens? And those those funds wouldn't be enough to cover for three months. So then I was like, okay, what if I did six months? Six thousand dollars a property times three properties, that's eighteen thousand dollars. And I was like, okay, that makes more sense. Just kind of have eighteen thousand dollars sitting in a bank account doing nothing. And it isn't a high yield savings account, so it would be earning like three percent. But I was still kind of like, I don't know, because it seems kind of silly to leave that much money just sitting there doing nothing. Although, again, they're called a reserve for a reason, right? Like, they're not doing nothing. So, kind of contradicting myself a little bit. But that just kind of got my wheels spinning. And that's kind of why I wanted to create this, just to walk you guys through how I'm thinking about this. And obviously, you guys can figure out what's going to be best for your properties. But for me, right now, I'm 23 years old. I think I'm at a point in my life where my risk tolerance is at the highest. It's going to be, I think, going forward, it's going to slowly go down and down and down and become less risky, less risky, less risky as time goes on. So I think right now, I'm going to probably be sticking more towards the three to four months worth of reserves. And that's, again, my mortgage. That's my insurance. That's my taxes. And then a little bit more to keep the properties running, assuming that in this scenario, I don't get any bookings absolute doomsday. And again, no one's coming, no revenue is coming through. So if I had roughly four months of those expenses, I could technically go four months without getting a single book into any of my properties and still not have to dip into my personal savings and my personal accounts, which I think is a pretty good number. And I think as time goes on, I'll probably want to build up more and more reserves, especially for certain items. And this is another thing that I think is just personalized for maybe you guys based on your properties, but just knowing how old is your roof? How old is your water heater? How old are your appliances, your furniture, all these things that you're gonna have to replace eventually. And knowing that and then customizing that for your properties is gonna be super important. I don't believe that there's like a one size fits all, like, oh, you need three months and that's it, or six months and that's it. I think it definitely depends based on your property. So I'm curious to hear what you guys do, how you guys think about reserves for your property, if you found a good metric that's worked for you. And I'm also curious on another note of what you do with your reserve. Do you keep them in a bank account? Do you keep them in a high yield savings account? Do you put them in the stock market? Like, what do you do with your reserves? I'm just curious to hear. Let me know in the comments below. I hope you guys got value out of this episode and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.